Ladies, welcome to The Feminine Mystery. My name is Azalea Dawn, and today we're going to be talking all about why Eastern European girls are the best at getting spoiled. Now, if you are new to this entire, like, area of, like, leveling up, I'm sure, like, you've heard of, like, the idea of almost, like, when people say, like, oh, I want to, like, marry rich, etc., etc. It's almost like they're talking about this sort of, like, escapist fantasy. It's usually the kind of thing that women say around the time when we're feeling like, oh, we don't want to take responsibility for our lives we kind of want an escape route we kind of just don't want to have to deal with the financial reality of our lives so we're like okay like we want to marry bridge and it just seems like a bit of a fantasy but if you actually look around and take note I would say that there is something that you're going to immediately notice going on here in society and that is that eastern European girls are the ones who are actually the best hands down across the board at getting the best quality husbands the best quality financial providers, the men who are making them feel safe and okay in their lives, and they're really good at maintaining those relationships in the long term. So I wanted to explore why that might be and give some actionable takeaways that we can apply to our own lives and our own relationships going forward to really make sure that we're also getting the best treatment possible in our relationships and really getting spoiled in the same way. So if this topic interests you, then stick around and let's get into it. Now the first thing that I notice is that they really know how to make a man truly feel like a man. One thing that I would say generally is the case about the broader world outside of the United States is that as progressive as this country is, many other countries are just not there yet in many places, both culturally, politically, all of the above. And one of those uh, things that really manifests is that gender roles are much bigger, um, a much bigger thing that is emphasized in Eastern European countries like Russia, for example, we're not going to get into maybe other things going on in these places, but in these places, gender roles are much bigger and much pre more prevalent than they are here. There are more traditional expectations placed on people and they are still retaining that aspect of society where men have one role in a relationship and women have another role in a relationship. Now, it's not lost on me that in American society in particular, in the United States, in elsewhere like worldwide just because of economic changes going on in people's lives women are being folded into the workforce it's just not enough to support a household or a family on one income a lot of the time for many other people so it just is natural that women are stepping into a lot of the same roles that are um that were traditionally reserved for men in the past and that is not lost to me that said i think that there is a bit of a shift that has to happen if you are really going to look to step out of those more masculine traditional roles and into more feminine roles especially if you are looking to no longer work or no longer have it be mandatory that you have to work in order to support your household so what does this look like when it comes to every day just starting the relationship from the beginning i noticed that a lot of these girls make it very clear that <laughs> they want to be treated like a lady from the beginning for example one of the girls we're not going to say who but just one of them that i've even like featured in this video she talks about the process of like meeting her now uh let's say her now partner and she talks about like this story where at the beginning of their relationship she was in the car and um or maybe in a past relationship excuse me but she was in the car waiting and because the guy never came around to the other side to open the door to the car and let her out she just stayed in the car the entire time and he was texting her calling her like where are you and she was like i'm still in the car you never open the door for me that is the kind of ladylike expectation that they have placed on the men and they make it very clear from the beginning they want doors held open they want everything as far as ladylike treatment and that really sets the tone for how their relationship is going to go from very very early on so that's one thing i think we can take away from these women we have to also be setting the tone for how the relationship is going to look from the very beginning 
Next, they understand the law of reciprocity. One thing that I often see as a bit of a criticism of the idea of being spoiled by a man is the idea of something for nothing, right? But the thing that really stands out to me that's so different about Eastern European women is that they understand that a relationship needs to be mutually beneficial. Now, this is something that I've talked about before at length. <laughs> it will just uh, take note that I know just from my analytics that a lot of my followers are like more into the spirituality stuff. And that's why I kind of like frame things from a perspective that might seem a little bit uh, like woo woo to some of you. But karmically, reciprocity is everything. You never want to take something for nothing, but we can get into that topic another day. What I will say is that these girls really walk, like walk the talk. They are all about making a relationship mutually beneficial. Anytime you look at one of these Eastern European girls versus, you know, maybe somebody else who's just kind of like, oh, like maybe like an American girl who's just like, okay, like I want to be spoiled. I want a man who pays for everything. I want this. I want that. That girl, that, you know, like American girl, she has no intention of actually giving anything in the relationship and it shows. That is why some people perceive this as a little bit of like a bratty attitude, something they really don't want to be around, something that they are just kind of like put off by. Meanwhile, if you really look at, you know, the relationships that these Eastern European girls are in, if you were to talk to some of these husbands, and I say it because like I have in real life, I've actually like met these people and I have asked, you know, like in social situations how they feel about this just so that I can get that understanding as well. And it really does match the same things that you see online when these, uh, these girls have their husbands, boyfriends, fiancés, and partners talk about them. In the husband's mind, in in the man's mind this woman is the most important thing right it's not about the fact that like she is bringing like this or that or she does this or she does that and I can't get that anywhere else it's about the fact that like what she brings is so beyond the value of money at all she is creating a life for this man she understands how to bring joy how to bring happiness vivaciousness energy she understands how to bring you know social you know the social aspect aspect in a lot of times when I'm meeting different people those social interactions especially through couples are being facilitated through women they understand how to bring intimacy and that feeling of connection and being truly in love with that other person and these Eastern European girls understand how to keep that going how to work at something how to be committed and to really want to like remain in that situation they have a completely different set of values that really just stands out in the mind of the men that choose them as something that money simply can't not buy and that is reciprocity it's giving in order to get right in order to get you have to give and that is something that these girls innately understand I'm sure not a single one of them, as far as like their husbands are concerned, would be thought of as a gold digger. They are probably thought of as something more precious than anything that money can buy in this world. And that is something I think that we can all learn from. All right, next, they prioritize maintaining attraction in relationships. Now, this is something that I have to touch on. It might seem a little bit obvious, but you would be surprised. I see a lot of women who, in my opinion, make this mistake in a relationship. They feel as though, especially in the United States, like they really want to be, quote unquote, their authentic selves. And their authentic selves means, at least like in their minds, that they want this man to constantly see them at their worst, right, in ways that are just maybe not publicly acceptable or that are a little bit gross, a little bit, you know, not exactly, you know, sexy, just to put it out there. And they want this man to accept them and love them anyways. I notice across the board that Eastern European girls do not have this mindset. They do not want these men that they are in these relationships with seeing them, you know, no makeup whatsoever if they don't have good skin. Um, with pimple cream on their face, maybe in like old ratty clothing, you know, messy hair that has not been capped, has not showered in days, you know, or maybe like even worse when girls are just, you know, maybe like passing gas or using the bathroom, you know, like having bowel movements in front of their partner. Like 
that is just it's not you know exactly attractive and what I notice across the board about Eastern European girls not just from online but of course like the ones I talk to in real life and ask these sorts of questions is that they don't do that at all they don't do that in relationships they do not even you know uh play those games for example if they are staying maybe um they're going to go on a vacation together i notice that eastern european girls will ask to have an additional room just for you know things that may be a little bit more unsightly so even if they're going to spend the night in the same room with this man they want to have another room just for you know <laughs> all of those things that I mentioned that are not exactly attractive behaviors just to keep the distance if they can't have a separate room like let's say they're gonna book you know like a suite there's only one or it's like a very luxe place they will hold everything if you catch my drift you know everything going on as far as like gastrointestinally they will do that somewhere else not even in the same room not anywhere near where their partner is staying whatsoever you would have no idea they will travel they will get up even if it's the middle of the night they don't care they are going to move on and make sure that that is out of mind out of sight and every stage at which like you see these girls if it is like at home on a Saturday afternoon, they have loungewear. They are keeping it where they look put together. They look attractive. They look like something that you would want to open the door to your home and actually see, right? They are maintaining attraction and prioritizing maintaining that attraction at every stage in their relationship. They don't just one day show up with like pimple cream and a bonnet and expect that, you know, like somehow <laughs> be keeping things you know spicy in the relationship so i think that that's just another thing that even if you can only get like maybe 80 percent of the way there in your relationship we can't all be perfect but it's just something to take note of and start to practice even when we're alone with ourselves how can we make sure that the way that we're presenting ourselves in our most intimate places in our most intimate relationships how can we make that desirable and really make sure that we're maintaining the attraction even in those spaces now finally, and this one is major, they use their looks to please, not to self-express. Now, just to get into this, because this is a little bit of like a spicy, a little controversial, I understand, but look, just hear me out here. If you really are serious about changing your life, about getting into a certain type of relationship that's hypergamous in nature, where you're really going to be taken care of, I really feel like you owe it to yourself to at least explore this idea a little bit. I know none of us want to change, we just want to be who we are, and we want other people to just accept us as we are, blah blah blah, but life is just not like that and the sooner that we can start to accept that and accept that we are capable of change that change can be a good thing that you know there is such a thing as positive change and we're able to make that I really feel like this thing is really taken out of topics like this now when I say like the user looks to please not to self-express that literally means they make choices I noticed just from talking about them from seeing their decision-making choices up close and up front that they are choosing everything about their appearance with regard to how like it's going to position them strategically in regards to attraction and that's not to say that they're obsessed with what other people think of them I think that there is a thing where um it's just referred to at least in sociology as being a high self-monitor people who really think about what they look like in public and how other people perceive them and they're constantly monitoring themselves as opposed to people who don't who are referred to as low self-monitors. They are not concerned with what other people see when they're out in public. That is a little scientific. I can get into that more if you're interested in that topic, but I just want to point out that that is a separate issue and it's often kind of like conflated socially with our uh, self-esteem, right? You see a lot of people saying, just don't care what other people think and blah, blah, blah. That is not what I'm talking about here. What I'm saying very specifically is that let's say you have a girl who is brunette and she's considering changing her hair color. She will literally get feedback over what would be most attractive to her target audience, which is probably either a certain type of man or... <laughs> 
let's just say like being attractive in general might be how she's gonna put it but that is what she is looking to explore she doesn't just go and choose a color that like oh really feels like she's going to express herself for example i had a friend who wanted to dye her hair red she's naturally brunette she uh recently transitioned to blonde she used to be uh she used to have like artificially like red hair and she was like saying that like oh she wanted to transition to red again and i really had to like stop her and just like explore this idea further it was like you know if you are looking to attract a quality partner there's not a lot of people who want like an artificial like hair color on a girl it's just not the most attractive thing and that conversation was a little bit difficult for her but it's second nature to these eastern european girls they don't even think they don't flinch at this kind of ideology they make choices specifically with regard to what is going to make them look good what's what colors are going to look good on them not like what colors are their favorite colors what colors are going to look good on them right they make choices in regards to what hair colors are going to look good at them what weight is going to look good on them they make all of these choices quite strategically now i know that if you have like your self-esteem very attached to your appearance this can be a little bit of like a difficult space to maneuver in but i would just encourage you to be open-minded and be a little bit more like view it almost like a project in the same way that like if you were like designing something like a handbag or a car or something like that look at your own body in that way look at the decisions that you can make about yourself and try to be strategic with how you make them right so that is the last thing that i'm gonna say on this topic now ladies if you've enjoyed this video leave a like below and check out the other videos on my channel again my name is azalea dawn and this is the feminine mystery i will see you in my next video